Iowans kept playing the lottery during this COVID-19 pandemic, but then also listened to Jamie Foxx. This Hollywood star and others were urging them to bet on sports with a host of companies. Now, Matt Strawn says the Iowa lottery is doing well still, but also paying attention to this competition. I think when you look at the operational health of the state's lottery, uh, a lot of credit goes in a lot of different directions. One, those 106 Iowans that wake up every morning and make your lottery work those 2,400 plus retailers around the state and the clerks that serve them, uh, that support our products, uh, and the stakeholder organizations that benefit from our proceeds. We have been, when you look at our sales, uh, it has been remarkable uh, to see how Iowans turn to lottery products uh, during the onset of COVID, for example, when there were very limited entertainment options. Nobody was going to ball games, uh, people weren't going to movies, there were no concerts. So we saw a tremendous increase in the purchase of lottery products, primarily scratch tickets uh, that folks could take home and play, uh, but going- and Last year was a record, right? Last year was a record year. So we sold uh, roughly $452 million uh, in lottery products in fiscal year 21. That's about a 20 plus percent increase year over year. Uh, real dollars, that means 101.7 million back to the people of Iowa. We've been able to maintain that pace through the first seven months of the current fiscal year, but getting to uh, perhaps some of those challenges uh, on the horizon. Uh, you mentioned increasing competition uh, for the entertainment dollar, specifically sports betting. Heck, there's probably going to be a sports betting add-on after this segment, uh, <laughs> given the, the increase in marketing uh, that we've seen from Huge that. Huge money oh. behind these in these companies, right? No, there's no question. Uh, and I give a lot of credit to our team uh, for at least seeing that coming so we can remain nimble and offer prizes and remain relevant to players. Uh, but also, you know, we don't have a Jamie Foxx. You know, we don't have the Manning brothers uh, to put in our advertising. You know, we're the little old Iowa lottery, so we need to, but that's the market that we need to compete in. Um, so I think is, you know, we're still assessing uh, what the ultimate impact of that is, but, uh, but clearly uh, that's a challenge for us. And externally, we're no different uh, than any other business or household when it comes to things like inflation. Uh, our operational costs are increasing as we have, you know, we have three dozen Iowans that are in cars and vans every day servicing those retailers. Now, we don't pass our costs on. There's not a $2.05 Powerball ticket or you know, a $5.25 scratch ticket. So you know, we're gonna see some, some challenges with our margins, but even more importantly on the inflation side, you know, we have concerns for what all households are going through. Uh, when you look at where our tickets are sold, it's where you buy your groceries, it's where you fill up your car. The cost of both of those are going, out, uh, going up uh, for everyone so that entertainment discretionary budgets are getting, all Iowans are getting a little thinner. Uh, so we need to, to be able to continue responsibly raising revenue for the state. Uh, those are some of the external challenges that we're navigating. I'm sorry, that was a terribly long answer <laughs> to your short question. Not, a, not at all, that's the purpose of this show yeah. here. So when you start looking at the numbers, roughly speaking, the sports betting in our state will have, if you mess with the numbers here a little bit, in two months time, the revenue for that is more than you all bring in in an entire year, roughly speaking. Yeah, gross, gross revenue, gross not revenue, net to the state. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So as you kind of look at this, are, are the customers different? Is a lotto customer different than a sports better? Are they the same? Is there a crossover? Do yeah, you know yet? And not yet. We don't have a ton of uh, qualitative data on that yet. Uh, but it's, there's some indirect challenges, uh, such as what, you know, we're kind of joking a little bit about all the advertising. For sure. Uh, it's made our advertising costs. Uh, more expensive uh, for starters uh, to try and get our message uh, out in the marketplace. So that's one thing that uh, you know that we're kind of keeping an eye on for the future. But is there is there room for optimism in the sense that it was a record year for you last year? Yeah, there. Well, despite this new competition. Yeah, there is, and I think our challenge as a lottery is to continue to be innovative and nimble and relevant uh, to Iowans. Uh, a good example would be the way we're approaching prizes. Uh, for example, we need to. We need to compete, and one thing that we did this past year, uh, we loaded a bunch of Iowa State fans uh, up on an airplane, took them to Vegas to watch the Cyclones. Large prizes like that that perhaps the lottery didn't have to do. That's uh, saying something past. from a Hawkeye here, I, right? I know, right? So, uh, so yeah, we make sure there's some lottery experiences <laughs> at Kinnick Stadium uh, as well, Dave. But those are some of the things that we need to do, and we need to be relevant to where our consumers are. Uh, as we look at our retailers that are going to more contactless uh, you know, interactions with their customers, you know, whether it's self-checkouts, whether it's mobile ordering, whether it's curbside pickups. Right now, the only way you can purchase a lottery product is over the counter looking, uh, looking a retail clerk in the eye. Now, Iowa Republicans are betting that this November will be a winner. Coming up next, the money concerns about the Democratic candidates.